take your brunch game to the next level with this fun and gorgeous twist on a quiche. It's a leek, scallion, and goat cheese tart. And look how beautiful it is. Easy too. Stick around and find out. I'm Greg, and you're watching The Slice. This rustic yet elegant tart combines buttery leeks and scallions with creamy bright goat cheese and cradles it all together inside a crisp and tender crust. This pat brise has a savory twist to it and it's subtle but it really makes a huge difference. So instead of just salt, we're adding a little bit of freshly ground black pepper and it should always be freshly ground, otherwise you're losing all of the flavor. In a food processor, pulse together one and a quarter cups of unbleached all-purpose flour, a quarter cup of rye flour, three quarters of a teaspoon of kosher salt, and half a teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. Add 10 tablespoons of cold unsalted butter cut into cubes and pulse it until the mixture resembles coarse meal. Now that looks perfect to me, I can just tell already. And for the ice water, I always strain my ice out of my ice cold water because any bit of ice in your dough is gonna cause a big hole and you're gonna be really sad. So while pulsing, give it a drizzle, drizzle, drizzle. Add three to four tablespoons of ice cold water and pulse until the mixture resembles wet sand. Yep, that looks good to me, okay. Now we get this into plastic wrap to chill. Pour the mixture onto a piece of plastic wrap and press it together until a cohesive dough forms. And since the pan is a rectangle, I'm gonna press this roughly into a rectangular shape and then use a rolling pin to flatten it out before I chill it. And that'll make it easier and quicker to roll out later. Okay, and we'll just give this a fold and a fold. It's like wrapping a present. You can already see those beautiful butter bits, nicely marbled. All right, give this a chill for at least 30 minutes, or you could leave it into the fridge for up to two days. If you want to keep it any longer than that, put it in a freezer bag or wrap it in freezer paper, and it'll freeze for up to three months. On a lightly floured surface, roll the chilled dough into an approximate 11 by 14 inch rectangle. Yep. 14 by 10 and a half, a little bit wider. If you need to go wider in one spot, like up here, hold the pin with one hand and anchor it where you need to roll it out and just do a sort of sweeping motion and you'll see how it just pulls that dough out in that one spot. So, you know, you're not gonna always see that. You're not always gonna have a perfect edge, but that really pulls out that one spot without making it any wider anywhere else. And now we're ready to go on to our Pan. Roll it up onto your pin first and just brush off any excess flour with that pastry brush. You're not applying any pressure here. You're just sweeping across the dough. Same as you're rolling it up. Don't put any pressure on that rolling pin or you're gonna smash your dough together. This is all about just having a delicate touch. All off there on the bottom, there we go. And I like to start with the edge furthest from me because it's easier to see what you're doing that way. And just very gently, lightly unfurl it. We need to get this into every corner and edge. So just lift gently and let that dough sort of fold into those edges. We're still not applying any pressure at all. We're letting the weight of the dough and gravity do most of the work. And the hands are just there to guide it down. Okay, and here's a fun little trick for very quickly trimming these edges. Flush to the tin, just flatten the dough out like that, and watch this. And right over the top, we have a beautifully trimmed dough in seconds. Now, I'm gonna dock this one. This will also help you to get an even cook and to prevent shrinking. And to further prevent the dough from shrinking, we're gonna weight it. You could of course use pie weights. They're like little round beads, but I find that they're quite expensive and you need to buy like four packages of them for one pie dough. So I like to use beans or rice, dried beans, dried rice, not cooked, or lentils, or in this case, split peas and then really press them into those edges. 
crinkling up your parchment first. That's just gonna help you to ensure that you don't have any pockets of air between your weights and your dough. And this is ready for the blind bake. Bake until the crust is dry, about 35 to 40 minutes. One of the things I really love about this recipe is that it's loaded with fresh greens. We're using a combination of alliums here, scallions and leeks. Anything in the onion family is an allium. And then for the herb today, we have cilantro. Now, if you're someone who is averse to cilantro, you could certainly use parsley here, would be delicious. You'll want roughly two tablespoons of chopped cilantro. And for the scallions, we're gonna want about a cup, so just trim off those stem ends first. And then of course, the star of this tart is the leek. Now, unlike scallions, the dark green tops of leeks are tough, and they're not gonna get tender no matter how long you cook them. So just trim that off completely. Don't throw it away. It's an excellent base for any kind of stock and remove that stem end as well. Again, save it for the stock. And we're looking for about, oh, anywhere from half inch to one inch thick rounds of leeks. We want them to hold their shape. And this is the most important step to do anytime you're working with leeks, no matter how you prepare them, but especially when you're leaving them in rounds like this. Get them into a very big bowl of cold water and agitate them and let them sit and soak for a few minutes at least. I'll sometimes do this first thing and let them sit for 20, 30 minutes. They tend to have a lot of dirt in them. I'm just gonna show you if I can find some dirt in here. Yeah, there it is. So it's quite sandy. So you just have to keep agitating, let it sit, and then drain them thoroughly before you proceed with the recipe. I have drained the leeks very thoroughly on paper towels. We don't want too much excess moisture here. Important key is to lift them out with a slotted spoon so that all of that dirty, sandy water stays on the bottom of the bowl. So, in they go with three tablespoons of butter over about medium heat. Wait for the butter to melt before you add the leeks. Once that butter is melted and sizzling and the foam starts to subside, which it's doing now, those leeks can go in. What we're doing is we're really essentially pulling the excess moisture out of the leeks before we assemble the tart so that your tart doesn't go watery. Now, we're gonna be adding water in in a minute, which seems like the reverse of what you would wanna do, but that's gonna soften the leeks and actually help pull moisture out of the leeks ultimately. So it seems counterintuitive, but it's an important step. And to help pull out that moisture and also, of course, to season them, good pinch of kosher salt, and a little freshly ground black pepper, always freshly ground. I can't emphasize that enough. And we'll let this go for just a few minutes before we add our water and let them steam. These leeks are very close now. You can see they're just getting a little kiss of golden brown color, but we wanna preserve that vibrant green color because that's gonna be the star of our show when we bring the tart to the table to eat. Add a quarter cup of water, Cover the pan and let the leeks steam until they're tender, about three to five minutes. Remove the pie weight and return to the oven until golden brown all over. That'll take about 15 minutes more. They're sizzling now. So this can come off the heat now that the uh, moisture is cooked out and we're just left with the fat from the butter in the pan and that beautiful golden color. Scrape that up. That is called fond, and it's money in the bank. Lots of flavor in that fond. And time to stir in our scallions and our cilantro. Not all of it, remember we're saving some for later. So I'm gonna do about half of it. Looks like two tablespoons to me. And like any good chef, you're gonna season as you cook. It's very important to season throughout the cooking process. What you're doing is you're building layers of flavor. You season it all at the end, it's all surface salt and pepper, and that is no bueno. So just stir that to combine, and we're gonna let this cool slightly. And while this is cooling down, we can work on our cheese filling. This is my favorite kind of filling, not only because it features cheese, but also because it's what I lovingly call a dump and stir, 
meaning you really have to do almost no work. You just put everything together in the machine. In a food processor, add two ounces of goat cheese, two large eggs, two tablespoons of whole milk, two tablespoons of heavy cream, a half teaspoon of kosher salt, and a quarter teaspoon of freshly ground pepper. You could certainly do this in a bowl and just give it a good vigorous stir with a spoon as well. That's it. We're ready to assemble. Now that we have all of our components together, this is very simple and straightforward. Pour your filling into your crust, self-leveling, so you can just pour it right in. Do not have to be precious about it, but I do want to make sure I get every last drop and scrape all of it out. We top it with our leek mixture. I like a sort of rustic casual look, so I'm just gonna let it sort of skitter in there randomly. And this filling will set into that custard as it bakes. These leeks are shiny and tender and buttery delicious and already good enough to eat. But they're gonna be even better when they're baked into this beautiful cheese custard. Just sort of spread it out to the edges so that there's an even distribution, roughly, of toppings. We want everybody to get a good amount of these gorgeous leek and scallion mixture. Bake until just set in the center, 22 to 25 minutes. I really love to serve this tart warm. You could also let it cool to room temperature and serve it that way as well. And I'm just gonna give it a little more chopped cilantro for a final flourish. You could certainly give it cilantro sprigs or leave that out, but I like that little bit of fresh herb to serve. It has a different flavor than the cilantro that was baked into the tart. So I'm a corner guy, so I'm gonna take it from the corner. This would easily serve six people with a beautiful big salad. I like this as a vegetarian main, but it is sometimes nice to have the smell of bacon wafting through the house in the morning. That is a gorgeous, almost cracker-like crispy crust with this egg custard and all these gorgeous leeks. Mmm. Oh yeah. This is absolutely bursting with flavor. It's a celebration of spring, a celebration of alliums and eggs and herbs, and something I really hope you'll make for you and yours.